Good morning, third grade. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. Um, today, we're back to doing our paper normal, no quiz today. And look what we're doing, something different on our page today. So we've been working with graphs all week, right, friends? And, um, well, last week and now this week, we're starting new graphs. So we've done our pictograph, which showed pictures to represent numbers. And remember, that was a really easy way to look quick to see who had the most, who had the least, um, which one's tied, which one lined up exactly, right? And then we did our bar graphs, which were very similar to our pictographs, because we could just look at it real quick and see whether the bars were going up uh, vertically or if they were going horizontally sideways. We could see, um, you know, when we're doing the planet one, which planet had the most moons, even though we know they weren't being accurate with their numbers. If they were, we could look at it, right? And so on today's, we're doing line graphs. And line graphs are used for different reasons than bar graphs and pictographs. So line graphs kind of monitor um, how things change over time. And so you can watch it and see like, oh, like say we were looking at like gas prices. Moms and dads pay a lot of attention to gas prices because we like it when the prices are low, right? Well, right now the prices are so low because nobody's driving their cars to work. And so if you go to the gas stations right now, you can fill up your gas tank for super cheap. But there's been some times where the gas prices just went up and up and up. And you could say like on Monday they were this and then Tuesday here and you could, you could watch the prices go up and people would be like, oh, I want to fill up before the weekend because I don't want you know, the gas prices are going to be higher. And then all of a sudden they would go down and you would just watch them go down. And so if over time, if someone was graphing the gas prices, they would probably do like, a, like this, up and down and down. Now gradually everything's getting more expensive. So the line is gonna gradually go up, but it, it kind of does dips like this. So prices go up and then prices go down. And then they go up and they go down, they go up. So depending on what's happening in our world, so today, we're not doing gas prices, that's no fun. We're gonna do butterflies hatched in my parents' yard. So I've been showing some of you, I haven't showed everybody, so I gotta make sure I remember to show everybody, but I've been having all these chrysalis hatch at my house. Now I've only had about seven or eight, which I thought was a lot. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know. I started seeing the caterpillars and they would crawl and they would hang in their little J shape and form their chrysalis, They're these beautiful green, um, bright green chrysalis, these monarch butterflies. And so if I haven't showed you, ask me when I can talk to you next. Ms. Rowe, show me the pictures and I can hold up my camera um, to our calls and I can show you guys. But I, I went over to my parents' house, I'm going over to my mom and dad's because I've been helping my mom out. And my dad was like, Liz, because you know my name's Liz, I need more, um, some of your butterfly bush plants because the caterpillars are eating all of my um, plants and I need you to bring some over because I'm running out of food. So I brought over one of my, I had some in a pot, so I brought some of my butterfly plants over because I don't have as many caterpillars as they have. And oh my goodness, they have so many and there are caterpillar chrysalises everywhere you look at my parents' house. So all over the eaves of the, of the, of the roof, they're on the hose. They're on any little statue that they have. So they have like a little rabbit figurine statue. They're on there. They're on the bird bath. They're on underneath the edge of the house. They are um, I mean, everywhere you look. You just look and they're everywhere. So we've been watching them to see how many are hatching. And this is some of the data that we have. So look over here. So on Monday, only one chrysalis was found empty. It was probably the start, maybe the first guy that went and formed his. On Tuesday, there were two. On Wednesday, there were eight, so that was a big jump. Then on Thursday, only six. But still, guys, this is a lot of chrysalises. Friday, there were four. Friday and Saturday tied. Both had four. And then Sunday, they had three. Now, I didn't go over yesterday, so I don't know <laughs> how many hatched, but we're gonna plot this data on our bar graph and kind of see, not our bar graph, what are we doing? Line graphs on my line graph, and let's see how it looks. Um, and you'll see how this graph's a little bit different than what we've been doing. 
okay? So this is how we plot it. We look on our day, Monday, one. I go to Monday, and then I find the one. Oh, one is right in the first line. And I put a dot right on the Monday spot, okay? All right, so let's go to Tuesday. How many on Tuesday? Oh, there were only two. So I go to Tuesday. This was one. This is two. And I plot it there, okay? Now Wednesday, how many? Eight. Ooh, I gotta go, oh my gosh, you guys, look. I gotta go all the way up on that line to eight. See that? And you, you guys, you're gonna get to uh, plot on your guys' graphs today, okay? So just wait. I'm doing this one, you guys get to do one in your book. Okay, then Thursday, how many? Six. So let's go up, there's six. It's a very dark, color that in a little better. Okay, Friday, how many were there, friends? Four. One, two, three, four. Let's see how it goes, like I can see where it lines up. There were Saturday tied, so that was another four. And then Sunday, how many? Three, again, right? Okay, so if you look at that, you're like, Miss Roach, that looks like a jumbled mess. How does that even show you the way the butterflies, um, you know, were hatching? That doesn't really help me. I don't like this. It's because we're not finished. Remember, this is a line graph. We gotta draw lines. Okay, so I got my big ruler out, and we're gonna draw, it's like a dot to dot. We're gonna match them. Okay, so Monday to Tuesday, I'm gonna draw a line, okay? And then Tuesday to Wednesday, that was our big jump. I'm gonna trace a line there, okay? And then we're gonna do Wednesday to Thursday to Friday. These kind of all lined up, so this is kind of nice. Let's do this. Do this. Oh, and then look at this. We're going sideways. These two and these two. Okay, there. Now I can get some information. So looking at this, where was my spike in the week of seeing butterflies emerge, hatch out of their chrysalis? Yeah, it was Wednesday. So it started off kind of slow, kind of gradual, and then bam, a whole bunch. And then it was still kind of a lot, but now see how it's declining, the same, and then down. So now I can kind of make a prediction here. Now you know I didn't go yesterday. So when I go today, do you think it's gonna spike again, or you think it's gonna kind of follow this graph? Yeah, I'm betting it's either gonna be the same or down a little bit, right? It's like this was where most of them hatched, and then it's kind of gone gradually down. So see how you can study information and kind of learn from it? It's kind of neat. Okay, all right guys, so we are going to look at our paper now, and you're gonna see a sample of a graph. Now, remember yesterday I had that one page that didn't have, that I had the, the teacher mark, so I had to white it out. This is the second page. So after this, I have all the pages. I'm not quite sure what happened. So this one too, I had to white out a little bit, but we still can get the idea of what we're doing here. Okay, so let's look at, I think our graph is more fun, the butterflies hatching, but we're looking at egg prices here, okay? So it says um, changing egg prices and look at the years. So at the bottom, we're not looking at 2020, where we are, look at what we're looking at. Way back, 1930, what were the egg prices? 1940, 1950, 1960, 1970, 1980, and 1990. So Mrs. Roach was born in 1976. So this is actually my time. So I can look and see how much eggs were when I, now who knows if this is accurate because they haven't been very accurate with their graphs lately. So we, these could be um, mistake, not, necessarily, these could be estimates. We'll have to check with someone who really knows their, their egg prices to, <laughs> to see if this is accurate. Okay, but you can look at this just generally looking. Have prices and eggs gone up over time or gone down? 
Yes, they've been on the rise. They've gone up, right? Um, you can see that there's been a dip here and there, right? But for the most part, egg prices have increased over the years, not decreased. So things are getting more expensive. Okay, so we get to actually, they want us to read this graph. So it says, complete the table by giving the price of a dozen eggs for each year. So the first one they want us to do is 1940, okay? I'm gonna make this a lot smaller here. So let's find 1940, here we are. And we're gonna go up, this is the dot that I'm, I'm bubbling in in red. See how the 1940 kind of goes at a slant and then goes up? That's where we're looking for our lines, okay? Or for our measurement for that time. So if I go sideways and look sideways, how much were egg prices in 1940? That's right, guys, they were 35 cents. So we're gonna write 35 cents right there in the box down below. Let me make this a little smaller for us. Okay, let's look at 1950. Ooh, that went way up. See it way up here, guys? Oops, 1950, it's way up there. And if I look sideways, what is that red dot next to? 60 cents, so that was a big jump. Okay, let's go to 1960. 1960 is still up there, but not quite as high. Can you guys see what the change was? Yeah, 55 cents. Okay, all right, let's look at 1970. Going up, I'm highlighting it in red as we find it so you guys can see it. There's 1970. Oh, it's the same as 1950. Do you see that? So that was the same thing, 60 cents. Okay, 1980, that's way up here. Okay, so let's see, that was a big jump too. Ooh, wow, 75 cents, now a dozen. And then 1990 is way up in that top corner, it's hard to see the dot, it's 80 cents. All right, so now guys, when we go to the grocery store, it's a lot more expensive than that. Um, we're looking at like two something a dozen. And that's probably for the cheap eggs, one ninety nine or something. But I've seen if you get like the organic or the cage free, those can be like $5. So, okay. All right, so let's go to our questions to study these egg changes in price. Does the price of one dozen egg eggs tend to rise or fall so what is the trend Do, does the price when they say rise they mean go up does the price of eggs go up or does the price of eggs generally go down fall it goes up so we're going to say that the egg prices tend to rise i want everyone to write the word rise right here rise Okay, all right, let's look at the next one. For what year did the price fall? Did you see that one spot where it went down? Yeah, let me highlight it in a new color. I'll do it in blue. Guys, see right here, see how the line went down? That was the one time, so let's go down. What year was that? 1960. In 1960, for some reason, the prices went down in eggs. Maybe they had an overproduction. It's kind of like supply and demand. So the more eggs they have, the cheaper they are. The less eggs they have, the more expensive. So maybe there was more eggs at that time. So they had to sell them for cheaper because they, they had so many to sell. Okay, so let's look at number three. Do you think a dozen eggs cost 75 cents everywhere in 1980? Or do you think 75 cents was an average price? So do you think if we went to a grocery store in 1980, every single store would have it for 75 cents? Or do you think that's an average? Yeah, it's an average. Um, they're not, different stores have different prices. And so they would say this was about how much it was. Some might've been a little higher, some might've been a little lower. Okay, all right, so now you guys are gonna get to plot these scores down below. Now, I um, don't want to show it to you yet, 
because this was a part that I couldn't white out without being obvious. So I'm not gonna show it to you yet, but look at your paper. So on, actually I can do this. I'll show you just this. Okay, so see how we have test one, test two, test three, test four, test five. Pretend this is someone's like spelling test scores. Okay, so on the first test, they got an 85. Second test, they got a 95. Ooh, they studied a little harder. Third test, 80. Oh, maybe that was they were sick a day or something. Then the fourth test, ooh, they got a 90. And the fifth test, they got a 100. Ooh, so there's, they um, were really trying hard at the end there, you can tell, huh? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put little dots where um, the child scored for each test. So I'm not, I want to see if I can do this without showing it to you. Okay, so see, I'm being a little silly here, but look at the top of the screen. So see where it says test one. Okay, what you're going to do, test one said 85 cents, right? Or 85 cents, 85%. That was their score. So I want you to get your pencil go up where test one was and plot it where you think it goes. Then do test two, then do test three, test four, test five. I'm gonna wait a second because I want you guys to try to do it on your own and then I'll show you the answer. So go ahead and try to plot those. If you're like, Miss Roach, I don't know what to do, then just wait for me. Okay, I'm gonna show you. So if you're not done, pause the video so I don't spoil it. Okay. Does your graph look like this? Let's check and see if you plotted them in the right spot, okay? All right, so for test one, I'm looking right here, 85 cents. Test one, see where the dot is? 85 cents, right there. I keep saying 85 cents, 85%, <laughs> silly Miss Roach. Okay, let's look at test two. Test two, 95%. Let's see, did you put it on the 95? That should be your second dot. Okay, test three, 80%. Ooh, that should have been right on the bottom because see how 80 is at the bottom? And you can erase these and fix them. So don't worry if you need to change them. Okay, that was test three. Test four, 90%. So there's the 90 because I can see it right here next to it. Do you see how it lines up, the 90? Okay. Um, I'm going to erase those lines so I don't confuse you. Okay, and then test five, they got 100, so they're way up here at the top corner. Test five was the last test, and 100 is at the top. Okay, so we are going to draw some lines here, and I'm going to use red just so you guys can see it better. And I'm going to connect all the dots in order. You have to go in order. So dot one to dot two to dot three to dot four to dot five. Okay. And look, guys, does this show you a trend on this student? So it's like they started off, you know, kind of medium, then they went up, then they went real down, and then it's like, oh, that made them work even harder, and then they just kept going up from there, right? So this kind of shows you your, uh, a child's scores. Now it says, find the average grade. So this is what we get to do, guys. And, um, we're going to find our average. So remember, how do we find an average? What do we do? That's right, we need to add up the scores. So let's add them up. 85, 95, 80, 90, 100. Go ahead and add them all up with me. What's five plus five? 10, zero, carry my one. I'm gonna add, let's do nine plus one first. Nine plus one is? 10, 10 plus nine is 19, 19 plus eight. If it's hard for you to do those, say 19 in your head, and then you add eight more. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, okay? So now I have 27 in my head, and I still have to add eight more. So 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Good job. So we're going to put a five. Am I adding? Yes. Sorry, friends. And then put my three on top. Three plus one is four. Okay, so I got 450. Now, is 450 my answer? What do we do when we average? That's right. We have to divide. Okay, so I'm going to use my scratch paper here. That means my white space. 
down here. So I'm going to do 450 divided by how many tests were there? Five. Oh, this is going to be easy. How many four, fives can go into four? None. How many fives can go into 45? Nine. 45, subtract, I get zero, bring down my zero. How many fives can go into zero? Zero. So 90%, that's what I'm gonna write down here. 90 is the average, that was this child's average score. And if you look at those, it's between 85 and 100, 90 is like in the middle, right? So that makes sense that that's the average score. Okay, friends, so for the back of the page, um, since this took kind of a while and it was a lot of thinking, um, that top part, see where you see write the number your teacher says? I'm going to do that with you guys over the phone. It'll be more fun. So um, we won't do that now. So we'll do that over the phone. I want to focus today on um, our measurements because we haven't done measurements in a little while. So you're going to get to pick any three on this back side to do, okay? Any three that you want, but we're also gonna do all these measurement ones together, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the first one. Three cups equals blank fluid ounces. Okay, so our first step is to bring down what they want our answer in, fluid ounces. And then we box the one that doesn't match. Well, that's this, right, three cups. So what are we changing three cups to? We're changing cups to fluid ounces, okay? And we put our one, two, three. Does anyone remember what's bigger, an ounce or a cup? Well, here's a cup, right? An ounce is small, okay? So ounces are smaller. So let's do it. Cups to ounces, fluid ounces, multiply. We're going large to small. So we're going to say times, okay? Now, how many fluid ounces are in a cup? We haven't done this in a while. Does anyone know? Take a guess. How many fluid ounces in a cup? Eight. Did anyone say eight? Okay, there are eight fluid ounces in a cup. So eight is our special number. So now that we know we're timesing, we know our special number is eight, all we do is um, do the, the, the process. So we're going to do eight times the number in the box, which is three, eight times three. I'm going to use red to do the process. So eight times three equals what? 24. And so 24 is my answer, and I can put that in on all the spots. Three cups equals 24 fluid ounces. All right, let's try the next one. All right, it says five pounds equals how many ounces? Now this ounces is weight. Fluid ounces is liquid, but ounces and pounds, that's weight. Like a baby weighed six pounds, 10 ounces, or seven pounds, three ounces, or something like that. Okay, so let's see. We want our answer in ounces, so bring that down first. Now none of these are adding or subtracting, so we're only boxing the other side. So we're changing five pounds to what? Something ounces. That's what they want us to know. Okay, so what's bigger, a pound or an ounce? Pounds are bigger. So we're going pounds to ounces multiply. Remember, large to small multiply, small to large divide, right? But we're going pounds to ounces multiply. Okay, so put a multiply again. All right, and we are going to think of our special number. So does anyone remember how many ounces in a pound? 16 ounces in a pound, very good. So once I know 16 and I know my times, I just times it by the number in the box. I'm gonna do that in red. 16 times five, let's see what we get. Five times six is 30, carry my three. Five times one is five plus three is 80. So five pounds is the same as 80 ounces. Good job, friends. Ooh, are you ready for our tricky one? Here we go. Six and a half bushels equals how many pecks? Okay, so I'm gonna get my black to start off here. Okay, 
So we need our answer in pecs. We are gonna change bushels to pecs. Okay, so what is bigger, a bushel or a peck? Bushel, that's the really big basket, okay? Peck is still a big basket, but not as big. Okay, so bushels to pecs multiply. These were all large to small so far. Does anyone remember how many pecs in a bushel? Think of our chicken, we kind of made that joke. How many times did it take a little bite out of the plant? How many pecs in a bush? Four, that's right, four pecs in a bushel. And so now we need to multiply. Ooh, but this is fun, it's a challenge. So we're doing four times six and a half. Guys, I'm gonna write that underneath because you're gonna see it looks like some of our problems we've been doing. Six and a half times four. Now I can multiply regular numbers and I can multiply fractions, but can I multiply a regular number times a mixed number? No, I gotta change them. So we gotta change six and a half. So let's multiply. Two times six is 12. 12 plus one is 13. So this becomes 13 over two. And four, we need to make a fraction. We're going to make one. Is there anything I can cross cancel here? Yeah, two and four, right? Let's cross cancel. How many twos can go into two? Two, or sorry, one. How many twos can go into four? Two. And now I can just multiply. Top times top, bottom times bottom. What's 13 times two? Can you do that in their head? Double 13. What's 13 plus 13? 26, good job you guys. So 26 over one, which we know is the same as 26. So look friends, six and a half bushels equals 26 pecs. Oh my goodness. Okay friends, you get to pick any three you want here, okay? So besides that top, because I'm doing that on the phone with you. So you can pick any from six, any from eight, any from nine, 10 or 11, okay? And then I'll probably work with you on a, a few more of these on the phone, okay? But this video took kind of a long time, so I, wanna, I don't wanna overtire you guys out. Okay, so pick any three you want. Don't pick them all from the same section, okay? So don't do all from section eight. Try to you know, skip around, but pick three, okay? Any three, but not all the same section. Okay, friends, all right. I hope you enjoyed making line graphs today. I will keep you posted on our butterfly watch hatching. And remember, ask me on the phone if, if I haven't shown you any pictures yet. I've got pictures and videos I can show you guys. I've never seen a butterfly hatch yet. I, always, I look and I look and they get so close. Then I come out and they're gone. I mean, I've seen them after they've hatched, but I haven't seen them come out of it. And that's when I, I, I really want to see that. I'm just, I'm constantly watching, but they're, they're tricky ones. They like to do it. I think when no one's watching them, they wait. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll, I'll give you a call later and um, we'll go over your quiz from yesterday and then this paper too. Okay. All right. Bye guys. Language video and Bible video and math video today. So three videos to watch. All right. Bye guys.